Greetings and welcome to a Tomorrow's World webcast. It's great to see you here. My name's Wallace Smith and something grabbed me in the news that if you saw it as well, I can't fathom it didn't grab your attention. If it didn't, it should have. Uh, it was actually in the New York Times. The title of the article, it's by Nicholas Wade, March 19th. And the title is Scientists Seek Ban on Method of Editing the Human Genome. Uh, let me just read a selection. It says, a group of leading biologists on Thursday called for a worldwide moratorium on the use of a new genome editing technique that would alter human DNA in a way that can be inherited. Uh, Dr. David Baltimore said, you could exert control over human heredity with this technique. And that is why we're raising the issue. Uh, he's a former president of the California Institute of Technology, uh, one of those who's reviewing this. Essentially, scientists are concerned that we're at a point we can actually alter DNA. We can, in a sense, choose the kind of child we want to have, uh, modify that, and, and direct those choices and they're concerned about where, the, where that is going. And let me say for once, kudos. It's wonderful to hear a major ethical concern about current research. You don't see enough of that, frankly, and that's part of what I wanna talk about today. Two points come to mind. First, I hope that it's a little unsettling to you like it is to me, that we're at a point where our science fiction speculations are coming to reality at this point. That we can actually shape our own progeny in some way. Uh, it's interesting, if you go back to Genesis chapter 11, when mankind was building the Tower of Babel, God made an interesting comment about mankind. He said there, indeed the people are one, and they all have one language, and this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Now, mankind doesn't have just one language anymore, but if you think about it, the language barriers have dropped in great ways. Really, scientists are able to talk to each other from all over the world, and sure enough, we are growing in remarkable ways. The challenge, though, is we don't have the moral capacity to judge what's truly good to proceed with or what should be held back. Mankind has lost, frankly, the capacity to truly morally judge these arguments because we have unanchored ourselves from the one who gives moral guidance, frankly, the only one who can. So I do hope you're unnerved by this. It definitely warrants more attention. But a second point I wanna raise on this particular webcast is this. If you think about it, we have already been making designer babies for years. Maybe we haven't been altering DNA directly, but we have been choosing our progeny. We are, in a sense, designing our offspring, though frankly in a much more unethical way, by simply killing the unborn child that we decide we don't want. For instance, we're doing gender selection in the world. Uh, if you look at China, there is a terrible imbalance because of the preference for boy children. Actually, I have a, a Reuters article in which they made this comment. This is from uh, January 21, so it's really not too far ago. It says, Chinese health authorities on Wednesday described the gender imbalance among newborns as, quote, the most serious and prolonged in the world, a direct ramification of the country's strict one-child policies. It says here in Reuters, like most Asian nations, China has a traditional bias for sons. Many families abort female fetuses and abandon baby girls to ensure their one child is a son. So about 118 boys are born for every 100 girls against a global average of 103 to 107. I am sorry, we have been in the designer baby business for decades. Frankly, look at amniocentesis, uh, the, where the mother's womb is tested, the fluids are taken to look at, to see if perhaps that child uh, bears certain genetic diseases such as Down syndrome. If we find that child has such a disease, then parents are given an option. Do you want to actually have this child or do you want to kill it in the womb before it is born? We have been doing designer babies, but frankly, in a much more unethical way. You know, God has authority over human life. He told Moses in Exodus chapter 4, Who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? And he makes them in the womb. 
We are His. We belong to Him. And just because we can do something, it doesn't always mean that we should do something. Human life took over the authority over its own destiny from God a long time ago. Frankly, we're a little late in the game to figure out whether that's a good idea or a bad idea. I hope this commentary has meant something to you. Uh, please do check out our other material on tomorrowsworld.org as well as our Facebook and Twitter sites. And we look forward to seeing you again right here soon.